I need to have surgery and it's on my butt. Guys, me and Gray are in a fight, so I stole all the smell from the National Park map so we can't have any. I opened it up to all the pages and smelled it. That's not how it works. But it's, <laughs> we're in a fight because you didn't know how to change No, 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 battery. don't tell them why we're in a fight. We're going to Shenandoah. Lots of smell. <laughs> It really is gone. I know, I told you I took it all. <laughs> There's some in this page. There's a little bit here. Ma National Park maps, if you know, you know. We're going on a hike today. The hike is called Lewis, what's it called? I don't know, what's it, what is it called? Lewis something. Mountain Peak? Yeah, one of those. And it's like nine miles, so it's gonna be a long one. Hi, We've. how far have we gone? Um, we have gone one point. Four miles. So uh, where we are. So we are uh, here in the woods. All right, we just did a really big uphill stretch, so we're a little tired, but look at these purple flowers. They're so pretty. You have anything to say? They're pretty. <laughs> we're coming up on a tree tunnel. Made it. This is the top of Lewis Peak. Elevation 2,700 feet or something like that. It's just us and some bumblebees up here. I hate them. Smith, and I want them to die. Samantha doesn't like the bees. I like bees. Yeah. And it's nice up here. We are going to eat some sandwiches that I've got in my backpack here. And drink some water. And did you bring your Skittles? I did bring my Skittles. And eat some Skittles. Samantha's legs bleeding a little from the log that she noticed, but still, yeah, she catch herself. I still, I'm dumb. We've done like all the really popular hikes pretty much around here, so we're kind of trying to find other hikes to do that are still cool. I say this is still pretty cool. Lewis Peak, if you're looking for Lewis Peak. I finished my exams, so school is over for me, and hopefully I do good. A couple of weeks before I start my internship, go to the beach. Go to the Indy 500, vlog that. Vlog's coming up. Vlog's coming up. We were really ambitious. We're almost to the end here. But the trail's kicking our butts. That's the road that we came from. Behind me is a horse trail, 0.3 miles, that leads down to a fire road, 0.7 miles back to the parking lot. We're thinking that the uh, horse trail and the fire road are going to be a little less steep, and we know that they're shorter. My, my joints can't handle it anymore. I don't have a problem actually going uphill. Like, I actually do uphill better, but when I go downhill, it really, really hurts my legs. My legs just aren't holding up right now, so it's, it's, it's really painful. This is the fire road. It's flat ground, which is a uh, relief for yeah. Samantha. Oh my gosh, yes. I feel Wh so much better. Oh, which medicine is it that's uh, hurting your bones? It's flesh result, but I think it's probably also right like, I don't know. But yeah, I have osteopenia. Not quite osteoporosis, but osteopenia. So your bones are a little bit more porous, a little yeah. bit more delicate. I have another, like, that's what my last bone density scan said. I probably don't need to get another one of those for another, like, year or two. And you take uh, calcium every day. Yeah, I do. Calcium carbonate. I take Tums, and they taste gross. But I take them every day to try to help my bones. Tell us about the sleeve you're wearing. You've probably talked about it before, right? Yeah, everybody, like, knows by now pretty much. Like, I don't have lymph nodes in my arms, so this arm, you know, puffs up whenever I do exercise or I travel and stuff. It's an excuse to not wear her uh, wedding band because she hates me. I have my wedding me. band on here. We've been seeing some fat squirrels and I think they should be skinny in the spring because they just spent all winter. But I don't know. Squirrel biologist, fill the comments with knowledge. Squirrel biologist. This is a fire road. It's uh, not on fire actually, despite what the name says. My mom says that when she was a kid, they used to drive up these fire roads and go hang out in the woods. 
but they're private roads now. Like you can't drive on them. You can hike on them, but you can't drive on them. Anyone who's lived in Virginia uh, for a while. <laughs> a while. Let me know if these fire roads were ever public. Could you ever drive on these? Uh, and if so, which ones? Where? Can you still do that? Sounds kind of fun. Yeah, it does. Hi, um, last you saw us, we were on a hike and I just wanted to add this little update at the end of this video because there's kind of been a lot going on that I haven't been talking about. I, I know I don't need to talk about anything, but like, I don't know why I have not been talking about this when it all has to do with cancer and I've been so open about everything else with my cancer journey but I haven't actually like talked about this just because I think that it's weird and so I've basically just been having these side effects and now that they've gotten so extreme I feel like I should say something about it because I don't really see very many people talk about this but I know that it has to be a thing like if it's happening to me then it has to be happening to someone else so I feel like I should say something about it to kind of document what I'm going through just to see if it ends up helping someone else because really that's the whole point of why I started this YouTube channel um, in the beginning to document the, my cancer journey and everything that went on with it. So <sighs> I don't even know how to begin talking about this. I found out a few weeks ago that I need to have surgery and it's on my butt. I've been having problems basically since I started Ribocyclib in December of 2019. During my regular cancer treatment, my chemotherapy, I was struggling with hemorrhoids and it was very annoying. I never really had them before where it lasted more than a day or two. Um, but with like cancer treatment, you're constantly having to use the bathroom or having diarrhea and stuff like that because, you know, the chemo is making everything get irritated and everything. It all cleared up when I finished chemo. But then in December of 2019, I started Ribocyclib. I started having diarrhea like every single day. Sometimes it was like three times a day. That happened for like four or five months after starting that treatment. All of those like hemorrhoids and everything, they came back and they were very painful. Then in January, we took a family vacation and it was so bad then. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are like more painful than I have ever had before. And then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And sometimes I felt like it was getting better and sometimes it would go back to being bad and sometimes it would get really bad and sometimes it would like calm down and I was trying all these different things. I was trying all the regular over-the-counter stuff and nothing was helping. Sometime last year, probably like November or December, I started having a lot of blood, like more blood than normal. There was one day when it just bled for like 20 minutes and I was like, okay, this is not good. So I went to see a like specialist but the problem was is there was a snowstorm and they couldn't get me into the office so they did a virtual visit so no one actually checked anything no one actually looked at my butt and so they were just like oh we're gonna recommend you this cream and then we're gonna do a colonoscopy because there's blood and I was like whoa why do we need to do a colonoscopy and then I talked to my oncologist my oncologist was like yeah that is dumb you don't need to do a colonoscopy that's a little bit extreme, like the chances of it being anything bad are really low and since like the since the blood is like bright red and everything, it's it's not like it's deep in my body, it's like right on the edge. So that's kind of when I really realized that I had a fissure, not just hemorrhoids. It was like a fissure that was kind of opening up every single time I had a bowel movement and it's very painful if you've ever had one before you will know and i was having more problems with diarrhea than i actually was having with like regular because like you think about it as like it stretches and then it hurts more but really it was like the diarrhea because it was like more acidic or something it was like stinging more and you see why i don't really talk about this because it's disgusting and i know a bunch of people have probably already clicked off this video because it's gross. 
So then I, my oncologist was like, yeah, that's done. You don't need a colonoscopy. So I'm going to schedule you an appointment with the surgeon that's in the same building. And so I went to see him and he was really nice. He was the first person that actually looked at everything. He was like, yep, you definitely have a fissure. Um, that's the main problem that I can see right now without like doing a camera, putting a camera in there or anything. Just the problem with the cream from the other place was that it was giving me headaches and so I wasn't using it every day because if I used it more than once a day, it would give me headaches. So he's like, okay, I, I have another one that I can give you. And then he also wanted me to go on like a fiber. I can't even remember what it's called anymore, but you like pour it in your water and then you drink it. It gives you more fiber. And he wanted me to do that. And he wanted me to use this cream twice a day. That was probably January this year-ish. And then I, at that point I was really busy because we were planning our wedding. And so I ended up not really using the cream twice a day. Like he said, I tried the fiber supplement stuff and it was giving me worse diarrhea. So I just stopped using that. And he had an appointment set up for me to come back in a month and to tell him if things were getting better. Um, but I canceled the appointment because the appointment was the day after we got back from our honeymoon. And I was like, I haven't had time to really pay attention to this and really work on it and make sure I'm using the cream twice a day and everything. So I don't feel like I've given this a fair chance. Like, I don't think anything's better. Um, sometimes I feel like things are better and then they get bad again. Like the same sorts of things were happening. Then I started actually using the cream twice a day and it was, I think it was making things worse because I think it was kind of irritating the skin around like in the area that I was using the cream and then it was kind of like making it more sensitive and making it more painful so then I went back to using it like once a day and then I went sometimes went days without using it because I was just trying to see if anything helped and basically the same sorts of things would happen like I would feel like it would help a little bit and then it would stop helping and then it would get bad again so it was super annoying. I scheduled another appointment with him and he took one look and he was like, yeah, there's absolutely nothing that's better. Then he scheduled this surgery thing. And basically what he's planning on doing is there is this Botox injection thing that he can do that relaxes the butt muscle, I guess. And it makes it easier for me to poop. <laughs> um, and it, like because I can't control that muscle the cream that he gave me that's what the cream was doing but I guess this Botox injection will last like two or three months or something and I won't even have to use the cream and it should just relax that muscle like automatically and then the other thing that he's doing in the surgery is he's going to probably biopsy the area around the fissure just to see like if anything weird is going on there there are some weird things about it, like, first of all, that nothing is helping it. And second of all, that it's on the right side. And he says normally when it has to do with muscles not relaxing enough, it's usually a fissure on the bottom or the top and mine's on the right side. And I actually started developing a smaller one on the left side that gets opened up sometimes. <laughs> He's gonna probably biopsy around that area, but he might not if he like goes in and he sees like the reason why, like if he sees like a little polyp or like something small in there that he can just cut off and he's like, oh, that's probably the reason causing the fissure. He said that he's had that happen before where he's just cut, cut gone in, found like a little problem and cut it off and then it fixed the fissure and everything. So if he sees that, he'll cut it off and then he'll biopsy the area and then he'll do the Botox injection. Basically it's those three things and he's just gonna use his judgment whether to do any of those things. They've told me that it wasn't too bad recovery. Like I should just need like a day of recovery and maybe another day, like depending on how things go. And I tried to get that surgery as fast as possible because I've basically been in pain for over a year now, um, but even more pain in the past seven months. I don't know. So yeah, it's been really hard and that's been something I've been dealing with and it really all comes down to side effects from cancer treatment. So I feel like there's lots of other cancer patients that are dealing with this. And so like, why would I hide this? Why would I not include this? Um, yeah, so 
some stuff that you probably didn't want to know, but maybe you did want to know. <laughs> so of course I'm going to update you on that process, um, see if that helps anything. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. And I hope you guys like this video. I know it's a little bit weird. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Check out some of our other videos on the channel. And yeah, that's all. Bye.